don't understand. I don't know. Don't understand. Kate? Kate? Oh. Is, is everything all right? I, I heard you from outside and it sounded like something was happening. Oh, hello, Mikey. Yeah, I just don't understand this story. I've been reading. I've been reading the story in the Bible. so that I can understand it and I can tell the children at home. Of course, I would love to. So, that's the story for this week. Well, the story is all about David hearing of King Saul's death. Do you want to start? <laughs> so, David had just returned from Ziklag and he'd stayed there for three days after returning from defeating the Amalekites. And it was then that a young man came to see David. But this young man looked very strange. His clothes were ripped and he had dirt in his hair. Why did he look like that? Well, his clothes were torn and he had dirt in his hair because he wanted to show sadness for the snooze that he needed to tell David. Oh yes. And as he approached David and bowed, David said this, where did you come from? I mean, that isn't a great way to start a conversation, but I can see why David asked. And so the young man told David how he escaped the Israelite camp and that all the soldiers, they ran away or they were killed. He told David that among those that had fallen in the fight was Saul and his son, Jonathan. David was shocked and upset and didn't quite believe what this young man was saying. So he questioned him, saying, How do you know that Saul and Jonathan are dead? So again, the young man gave his answer. He told David how he happened to be at Mount Gibber and Saul saw him. Well, Saul was in a bad way and he called for the young man to come and help him. The young man had explained to David that two Philistines were coming to attack him and make sure that Saul was dead. But he didn't want to be killed by the Philistines. So Saul told the young man to kill him. So he did. He took the crown and brought it back to present to David. David was so sad and upset that he tore at his clothes and did not eat anything until the evening. David asked the man where he was from, and he told him that he was a Melchim. And David questioned him, saying, Why were you not afraid to kill the Lord's appointed king? But before he could answer David, he had ordered to be killed for killing the king. So David told him that by doing this, he caused his own death. So the Amalekite man was taken by David's men and killed. Well, thank you, Mikey, for helping me read through the story and answer my questions. This has really helped me think about what I'm going to say for our explanation. Well, you're so welcome, hey? And it was great to see David showing his emotion in different ways. Okay, so boys and girls, Kate is now going to talk to us a bit more about some emotion and today's story. So, I'll see you guys next week. Bye. So, hi adventurers and explorers. How are you? So, I'm leading the discussion for this part of our video. So, David felt lots of different emotions, which we could see in our story. When he heard the news of Saul's death, he was so, so sad. So Joel, we've got a question to ask we the do. boys and girls, haven't we? So, question for the adults, for you to ask your children. How do you think David felt when he heard Saul and Jonathan had died? Kate, what do you think? Mm, I think he would have been really sad. Mm. And I know he was upset because the story says that he was tearing at his clothing, which was in those days a sign of mourning. 
and I think he was probably very angry mm. as well because he ordered that that young man, that young Amalekite, was going to be killed. But he might have felt a little bit of relief because remember earlier in the Bible, Saul had been pursuing him and trying to kill him. So maybe he thought, mm, I don't need to hide any longer. So he might have felt a little, a little bit of relief. Now, when we hear sad news, we can feel lots of different emotions, can't we? Just like David did. So what's our second question? So our second question, this is for you children to ask your adults at home. What do you do to help deal with difficult emotions? Kate, have you got an example that you could share with us? Well, I have actually, yeah. I've bought, so I like to do something creative. So I've got here, um, it's, this is my memory box. And this is something I made when, quite a few years ago now, when my son died. So would you like to see what's in the box? Yeah, let's go for it. Let's okay, have a look. Oh, that's some really, really cool stuff in my box. So I've got, first of all, this is Ben's school diary, all right? And in Ben's diary, he did a beautiful picture of dolphins. He used to love dolphins, okay? Can you see that all right, picture of dolphins? And he wrote in the card to mummy, happy holiday, love Ben, which was really lovely. And I've got one of his, one of his favorite toys was this panda. So I've kept this. And I have got, just like David did when he wrote that lament or that song, uh, my husband wrote a poem for Ben called My Bright Star. Oh. And this poem was put on the back of Helen House's Christmas letter. Now Helen House was a hospice for children in Oxford. And so it was printed on their Christmas letter at the back. Oh. And then this is something that my children made. So. I borrowed this from my son Jack's uh, memory box because they both did a memory box as well, just like this one. And they made a coloured sand jar and you can see you've got red, yellow and blue and each layer of sand represented something that they remembered from Ben's life. So yeah, that's how I deal. I try and give myself some space and I try and remember. Um, so yeah, I find creative ways helps helps me deal with difficult emotions. How how do you deal with difficult emotions? What do you do? Yeah, no. So um, I, I love music. Um, mm -hmm. I love I love singing. I love listening to music. And a big help for me is when um, I've had a difficult situation or I'm just having a great day, um, and I'll put on some worship music. I'll put some put some headphones in, turn it up quite loud. Um, and it just it just helps me sort of get out of uh, the situation and just help me reflect on what's going on. And often that's when I will engage with God and God will sometimes speak to me through the songs that I'm singing and listening to. And it just helps me to um, express what I'm feeling in a slightly different way. Yeah, that's really good, isn't it? Because it's important to share our feelings. So whether we share our feelings with God, like Joel does, um, when he's listening to worship and he's telling God how he feels, or whether it's sharing our feelings with a good friend or sharing our feelings with family. So just like David did when he wrote his song, David dealt with his emotions by sharing his feelings with God through writing a song. A little bit like you do when you listen to worship music. That's really good. It's really good. So... Tina is now going to pray for us. So thanks to Joel and Kate. And today's story was a bit of a sad story, wasn't it? But um, I think Kate explained it really well. Now's our time to pray. And we can learn such a lot from David's life. In the Bible, there's a book of Psalms and David wrote a lot of those Psalms. And in Psalms 56, verse 8 it tells us that God keeps a record of all our tears in fact in some versions of the Bible it said he collects them in a bottle that's a bit strange isn't it I've come into the kitchen this week and um, I was going to think about what it would be like for our prayers 
to collect all our sad things and our tears in a bottle. So I'm going to use the tap, but I'm not going to cry a whole bottle, am I? Just going to turn the tap on a bit. And as part of my prayers, I'm going to fill this bottle up and think of the things recently that have made me sad. And think of God keeping a record of that. So when you do this, if you do this, you could do it with a bottle or a cup or a glass. And think of things that you have made you sad this week. Or things that have made you sad over the last couple of months. And you might say them out loud. I've been sad because I can't go and see my grandson on his sports day at school because of they having to be extra careful. And God knows that. And I've been sad in the last couple of months when I couldn't see people. I couldn't see you. That's really uh, tough. Because I miss you all. And you keep growing and I haven't seen you growing up. And God knows that. And what David meant when he said that God keeps a record of all our tears in a bottle or in some versions it says on a scroll writing it down it means he knows all our sad things so i'm going to pray now that as i pour away all of this water and think about the sad things that god will help comfort me in my sadness and will be with me drop gone. Now you might want to have a look at your sheets and do that prayer activity yourself and um, when you're doing it think about how good it is that even when we're sad, even when we've cried real tears, God knows that and God wants to comfort us. That's quite a good thing to do. Now, I'd like us to have a prayer together. And I'm going to read the prayer. And if you've got your sheets and you can read the sheets, you could read it with me. Or you could just listen to what I'm saying and perhaps say Amen. And now, our prayer to say together. Thank you, God, for the story of David, mourning the deaths of Saul and Jonathan. David experienced many different emotions when he heard the news. Thank you, God, that you care about all of our emotions and feelings. Thank you for those friends and family around us who can support us through sad and difficult times. Help us to be good friends to others and to listen when they share their feelings and to offer support. So this week, if there's something you feel sad about, don't forget that as well as telling your friends and telling your mum and dad, you can talk to God about it and that he cares because he knows every single bit of our lives. And it'll be a good week, won't it? Especially to look out for your friends. And if someone's sad, to be with them and to help them. Have a good week and I'll see you next week. Bye now.